Yeah, just talk a bit. Yeah, it does get it, but you got to talk. A bit. I was going to do a. That's what I do. That's how I sync them. Yeah, yeah. Talk like this. So we're here with at the Strength Fortress with JP Kiaki, five trong. Uh, can't do a deadlift. Uh, here at the Strength Fortress, and we're going to be doing a few series of videos today. Uh, first off the bat is butt wink which is a pretty common comment that we get on a few of our uh, videos here at Melbourne Strength Culture, or not here at Melbourne Strength Culture, at the Strength Fortress, but JP gets them quite often a lot. It's a very common mistake for beginner lifters, so it's something that I think both of us, or all three of us here, could definitely touch on and, and help you out with your squatting efficiency. Cool, man. So what we're going to do, like uh, Jamie said, is we're going to talk about the butt wink. Um, and before we go on, first off, we need to know what it is. So I'm going to get Jamie to demonstrate what a butt wink is. Um, and you're going to see here, you can come around and you can have a look, is that as he goes into the bottom of a squat, you've probably seen this before, they round into this uh, lumbar flexion. Um, you can have a look again. We'll do a couple reps. Cool. One more time. Well, wow, mate, that's a very good demonstration of <laughs> some good butt wink. And there's two real major uh, parts of the butt wink. One more time. <laughs> There's two major parts. The first is the eccentric component. So he goes down and you'll see what happens is the pelvis dumps and hold there. That's the first part. And the second part is on the way up where they kick back out into this shape, right? And they stick their hips out on the way out of the squat. And one of the things that a lot of people ask is, you know, I, I have this symptom or when I squat, I experience this butt wink and it doesn't hurt, it doesn't cause any pain. Is this something I should worry about? And is this something that I need to address or can I just get away with it, get, get away with out kind of addressing it? And the answer is, it is definitely something that's worth looking into. It's definitely something that you need to correct. And what I want to do today is quickly show you uh, why it's happening, explain to you why it's happening. And that'll probably help you kind of appreciate what you need to kind of correct in your own movement to ensure that your lifting is uh, improved and you can lift more weights and avoid injury down the road, even though it's not causing pain in the first place. Okay, the first reason that it's happening is uh, Jamie's going to demonstrate again. And with the very uh, commencement of the movement, you can come even a little bit closer, is he's going to go into that quarter squat and he's going to hold there. Now, the coach is going to yell hips back. So what he's done is he's pushed his hips back. But you also want to have a good posture. So you want to have a chest up. And they end up in this really extended position. And that is the very first major cause for you falling into this butt wing pattern, is that the lifter moves into lumbar flexion, lower back flexion. You can see that. Yeah, he's got this really big extension moment. And then as he goes down into the bottom of his squat, holds it there, he's struggling now to hold that shape. And what's going to happen as he gets to the bottom, he goes into this, this is lumbar flexion, it's when your lower back rounds. And then on the way up, he goes back into extension, holds, just to give us a look, and then he finishes a lift. So the first reason why you need to kind of correct this is, I'm going to show you, I've got to show you, this makes, makes things a little bit easier. Um, is that when you're going on the, uh, into the bottom of a squat, it's a position of triple flexion. It's where your ankles, your knees, and your hips are flexed. That's what enables you to get down into the bottom of a squat. And if you're trying to hold extension in one, pat, in one part of your body, that is your, uh, your lower back, you need to find that flexion elsewhere. You're looking for flexion in different parts of your body, but you only have so much range of motion at each joint. So let's take a look at this really easy example to kind of help you understand. This is someone standing up, and this is their hip joint. This is just someone standing up, and that's their knee joint. And you can see here at their hip, this angle here is you know, 180 degrees. It's a straight line. Similarly, if you have someone standing up, just uh, you know, the same little, the same example, but they're standing like this. This person is also standing up, but they've got this classic like anterior pelvic tilt. You might have that heard. Would be, that would be me standing like this. Yeah, exactly. And you might have heard Jamie so that's speak. That's the first example. So this would be number one. Just standing straight. And you might have heard Jamie speak about uh, anterior pelvic tilt in previous videos. It's an extensor tone. We did a video on extensor tone. So you can see that although these two people are doing the same thing, they're standing straight, this person is already in some sort of hip flexion. Their hips are already flexed, like by default. They haven't even started to go down. So you can imagine if someone tries to hold this pattern on the way down into their squat, if someone tried to hold that pattern as they went down, they're going to run out of hip flexion. They're going to run out of space here. Eventually their femur their like, leg is going to crash into their thorax all right? or into their lumbar spine or all, all the stuff in between. So you need to get that flexion elsewhere and your body looks for that flexion. And so you go into flexion, your lump, lower back will round into that position. So the first to correct the first part of your butt wink is to avoid going into extension in the very beginning. It's to avoid kicking your hips out. So James is going to show us here is he's going to start the squat really slowly and he's going to go into a quarter squat and you're going to see what happens here. Hold there.
Good, and I'm gonna even make this a little bit more exaggerated. Lean forward a little bit more and like round out your lower back a little bit. That's probably too much. There you go, good. And you can come around here, Charlie, and you're gonna be able to see. See his lower back here? It's really flat. That's really, really good, as opposed to, stay there, Jamie, but stick your ass out. That, right? Now, what he's done here is he's actually flexed his lumbar. Even though he hasn't changed his position, uh, flexed his lumbar, flexed his hip. I actually get extended the, the lumbar. I get to pinch him in the front. Yeah, yeah. He's extended his lumbar, but he's flexed at his hip, right? So instead of doing this, we want to, there we go, flex at the lumbar and release some of that flexion in the, lower, in the, in the hip capsule. So now he's able to descend into his squat and hit the bottom without losing any of his position, which is really, really what we want to achieve. Stand up. So basically, when you lose range in one joint, which is the hip capsule, or it's compensates in another. Yeah, you're looking for that flexion because the fact is the bar has to move from here to here. Yeah. That the bar has to have a movement, a global movement, and that's the sum of all the little movements. So sum of all the little flexions. It will find a way no matter how. Yeah, exactly right. And if you're not allowing it in one area, it's going to search for it elsewhere. So that's the first part of the of the. I guess puzzle, is avoiding extension on the descent. So again, go into a quarter squat, hold it there, maybe lean forward a little bit more. And a lot of people find this hard. So what I get people to do is just pause in this bottom and kind of like alternate between positions. So that's lumbar flexion, yet you feel that, go the other way, hold this extension, hold for five seconds, hold that, then it goes the other way again, hold that for five seconds, go back. So this is what I get a lot of people to do. And you can even see, Jamie's pretty experienced with this, but as he swaps positions, he kind of gets the shakes. A lot of people, especially beginners, will get a lot of shakes because they find this position so awkward and uncomfortable. They're foreign. foreign. Their body's never been in this slightly uh, flexed lumbar position. They get the shakes. That's the first part of the, of the puzzle, right? The first part of the riddle is going down to the squat correctly. The second part is the, on the way up, right? And this is where the... Uh, I guess the cause is slightly different. So for example, Jamie's gonna demonstrate again one more time. He's gonna go into his squat properly. So he's gonna go down into the squat properly. And he's gonna be slightly flexing the lumbar, so slightly flexed. And on the way out, he's still gonna do it wrong. He's gonna kick his hips out and then come up. So it's all well and good to enter the hole correctly, but sometimes lifters can come out of the squat kicking their hips out. And this is a really uh, complicated explanation, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway, and some of you will understand this a little bit better than others. So you need to think about coming out of the squat and what's happening. So I'm going to use Jamie again. You need to think about what joint angles are actually changing as he comes out of the squat. So hold it there and just come up at like two inches. Good, and hold that. So in order for that movement to occur, there needs to be extension at the hip and keep going and the knee, but mainly at the hip, keep going. And he's extending his hip really well. That's correct. That's exactly right. Cool, stand up. And there are two muscles that contribute to that hip extension, right? You would know them as the glute max and your hamstrings. Now, the question is how much can your hamstrings contribute to this action? And the answer is quite little because your knees are also extending. And if you know anything about anatomy, you'll know that because your hamstrings cross your knee joint, as your knees are straightening, your hamstrings should be stretching, they can't be contracting. Uh, there's a Lombard's paradox, I think it's called. A whole bunch of stuff's going on. So really it should be your glutes that do the work. But what will happen is that on the way out of the squat, in order for people to engage their hamstrings, they will change their position. So here's a really easy demo that you can use. I'm gonna get Jamie to go into an RDL position. So just go into an RDL position and hold that, hold that there. And, I want, and you can do this yourself at home. So round your lower back, Jane. Hold that. And uh, just touch your hamstrings. And what do you feel in your hamstrings? They're soft. They're soft, right? And what happens when you stick your ass out? So go into full extension. What happens in your hamstrings? They tighten up. They tighten up. And you can do this at home and you can feel that, right? You put tension in your hamstrings by extending your lower back. So go again, you can put tension in there. So if a lifter's got weak glutes, right? Let's say their glute max are weak. Let's say they, they find it hard to activate their glute max, all these types of things. What are they gonna do in order to extend the hip? How are they gonna extend the hip coming out of the hole? They need to use a secondary muscle to help that hip extension. So they're gonna use their hamstrings to extend the hip. So James is gonna show you again, and now hopefully you can understand this. He goes into the bottom of the squat. You can go into it just fine. And if your glute max can't, act, uh, can't extend your hip, you're gonna extend your lower back. So extend the lower back, hold it. Now that puts tension in the hamstrings. And now the hamstrings can work to extend the hip. And then you get to the top and you'll, you get through it. So what happens is your erectors fire first. So your erectors kick you into hip extension, uh, into lumbar extension. So his erectors will switch on. So he goes into this duck position on the way out of the squat. That puts the hamstrings on slight tension. And now his hamstring can contribute to the hip extension that his glute max should be doing. Makes sense. Makes heaps of sense. So what we need to do is, in order for our lifter to get out of the hole better, is there's two kind of areas that you need to address. Firstly is glute max strength, so that's things like 
glue max developers, so you know anything hip thrusters or RDLs or anything like that, but it can also be a queuing thing. So it can be as simple as really correcting the pelvic position as they come into the squat and out of the squat. So it can be here, and they uh, let's go back down. So they go into the bottom of the squat, and then they come out of the hole incorrectly. Go out of the hole incorrectly. They see, and they, you stop them. You go stop there, JM. Correct your lumbar position. Hold it. That's better. And even if it's too far, like even that's probably too flexed. But that's good for now. That's fine because you need to kind of push them out outside of their comfort zone to encourage this new movement, and then you can stand them up. Could so really, could a belt or learn to brace correctly? Yeah, 100%. A bell can help and bracing correctly can help, but... It's a motor control issue first. Exactly right. And a lot of people talk about uh, mobility and stability issues with a lot of their sort of technical faults. A lot of the time it's just a motor control issue and that's what we find with our lifters. If you just actually learn how to do the movement correctly, and as you said, put yourself in the wrong position to teach the right position, that goes a long way and we've found that a lot. Um, so most of the time, if you can just improve a motor control and, and increase that sort of awareness of the position proprioception, you want to be, coordination, yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff, it goes a long way in actually just fixing the issue because you don't actually know the correct way to do it. So a really good drill that I'll use to help people kind of learn these positions is with a barbell. It's a tempo squat, so we're going to get Jamie under the bar, and you'll see what I'll get him to do. So what I'm going to do is tell him to descend across six seconds. So he's going to take his stance, and Jamie, I want you to pretend that you're a novice lifter who goes into this uh, butt wing pattern. So go down across six seconds, and I say stop. So I st stop there, stop there. Good, and I go, Jamie, do you feel this position? Yep. Do you feel that you're in too much extension? Yep. All right, so round your lower back a little bit, a bit more, and lean yourself forward a bit more. You can lean over, and uh, hold that shape. And I'll get them to hold for five seconds, six seconds, just so they can feel that. Go down into your squat a little bit more, keep going, hold that. Now it should come out badly. So he comes out badly, hold it, and I tell him to stop again, right? So he's come out badly, and I say stop. James, readjust, correct it again, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then he can stand up. Good. Go again one more time. He'll go down into his squat. I pause him, stop it there, correct your lower back position, lean forward a little bit more, hold that, good. Now hold that shape as you go down. Go, go down, go down. Hold that shape. Now do a better job. Try to hold this position as you come out of the hole, and you can see he does a much better job of holding his lower back, squeezes his glutes. All right, rack the bar. What will happen is for beginners is they find out really hard. Even just with an empty bar, you can have a 200 kilo squatter with an empty bar, and they'll go from this extended position into this flex position, and they shake, and they can't hold it for very long, and then they go into the bottom, and they come out, and they just stick their ass out again, and they go into this ex extension pattern. It's just compensation stuff. So, I mean, you could do all the bracing in the world or wear a belt, but if they can't do it properly with a bar, they're, you know, underneath the belt and underneath the bracing, they're firing the wrong muscles at the wrong time, and they've got glaring weaknesses that should be addressed. Cool. That's Thank you very everything. much. That's everything I've got today. I hope you've uh, understood everything. As always, everything. you can follow JP. Where can we find you? Uh, on Instagram, at 5 Trong, on Facebook. And at the Strength Fortress, if you're in the yeah, area, come here. for a session. This place, yeah, cool. And cool. also, you can find us in the description box below. Pretty straightforward. Thank you. Um, that's good. Yeah. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, good. Thanks for having me. Happy lifting. Woohoo! Fuck, that was a massive, like, a uh, one taker. A one taker. What do you think, Charlie? Smooth. Not bad.